Hello, this is Randy Mills, and this is going to be a short video tutorial for officials on how to view your availability, create blocks, and remove blocks within the Zebra web system. We get started by logging in. If you're part of more than one association, you're going to have multiple associations listed here for you to be able to log into. I'm going to choose one of my NJISAA portals now. Click here. And if you're not, if you're only part of one association, you'll come straight to this screen. We're going to click next on the sports officials assigning system brings us to our main page and for the purpose of this video we're looking under officials my availability when you click there it brings up a calendar and you can see lots of different colors and lots of different things going on the legend up top tells us you know the blues confirmed game yellows pending game and so on so if you're checking your availability you can easily see the white dates of the dates that you're available I could see that I've got a full block in for Saturday the 13th, Monday the 15th, Sunday the 7th, and the Burgundies are partial day blocks. If you want to know what is going on on a particular day, for example, the greens are split dates. For any of the dates, you can simply put your mouse over the number and it will give you a pop-up. Now, when there's only one thing going on, you can see it's pretty simple. It's showing me I have a confirmed game on the 5th, and that's all I have going on. But some cases, if you mouse over when there's a split or more than one thing going on, you can see a whole huge list pop up here, which is not showing everything. And I'm going to show you now how a better way to log in to see all your blocks on a particular screen versus having to check each date individually to see what's going on. And the way we do that is choose the month that you want to check here, and then you can click here. This is brings us to a screen where we can again change the date if we want to change it. And no matter what we put in this window, if I were to put February 5th to February 20th and then click search, it's still going to show me the entire month. Um, what this button does, current client only is, if you remember, I logged into one of my NJISAA basketball uh, portals. If I click current client only and then hit search it is only going to show me my blocks for the portal that I'm logged into in almost all cases you probably don't want to click that because you want to see all your blocks you're gonna click search and you're gonna get a list like this that looks similar to a spreadsheet very valuable on any particular date if you had a game canceled on say February 24th and you wanted to make sure that the block was removed you would simply scroll down to the 24th and see if you currently still have any blocks going. I don't have anything going on on the 24th, so the game I had on the 24th was cleared out of the system. If you come here and you see, for example, I have two games listed here, one at 4 and one at 5.30. If that 5.30 game had actually been canceled, well, then that means this block had not been removed, and you will have to go in and remove it manually, which is what we're going to go over next. So I'm going to come back to my schedule here, and I'm going to look at um, what it is I want to do next. Let's say on Sunday, January 7th, I have a full day block. It's in red, but I'm now available on that day. So I want to clear this block. So I can simply click on that, and it populates the date, or I can click in the date field and put the date in there either way. And then I'm going to come down here, and what I'm going to do is remove a block. Now, one thing that's important to note here, if you remove a block, it's going to remove all the blocks on that day. There is no way to only remove part of a day block. If you needed that, what you'd need to do is remove the partial day block and then put a block back on for the part of the day that you needed blocked, which we'll show you again in a minute. Now, when you're removing a block, you do not need an explanation in here. Almost always when you're removing a block, you're removing it for all associations, but if you did have a reason to only remove it for one or two associations, then you could do that by clicking on those specific um, checkboxes. So in this case, I've got the seventh, I'm now available, I'm going to remove the block, don't need to get involved with times because we're not clicking on that, and we're going to click all associations, I'm going to click update, and now you can see I'm available on the seventh. Now. It would be the same process if I was move, removing a partial day block. I'm simply going to click on it. I'm going to uh, hit click remove block. I don't need an explanation. 
click there, all associations, and now you can see I'm available on the 14th. Now let's say I need to create a block, and most commonly we're creating a block one day at a time. So let's say I want to put a block back on for Sunday the 21st. Again, I click on it, it puts it in there. Um, now, if you want a full day block, it's pretty straightforward. Click full day, and again, in most cases, you're going to block all associations, and then you're going to hit update. Oh, because I'm creating a block, I do need an explanation, so I'll put uh, family. Most assigners don't care. I don't care if you put the word block in there. So now I'm going to click update, and now you can see I have a block on the 21st. Let's say I want to put a partial day block in on the 28th. I'm going to click on the 28th, partial day, pick my start time and end time. Well, I've got family plans after 3 o'clock on the 21st, so I'm going to block from 3 o'clock on. Just be real important with your AMs and PMs here, because when you hit the drop-down list, the first thing you see at the top are the AMs. So be real certain that you don't hit 3 AM and you actually hit 3 p.m. if that's what you're going for. Again, I'm creating a block, so I need to put something in there. I'm blocking all my associations, and I'm going to hit update. That's thinking for a second this time. And you can see now that the 28th is in Burgundy, indicating a partial day block. Now, another feature you can do if you wanted to cover for say an entire season you're someone that works and you can't get to games before five o'clock so let's say this upcoming spring season I need to be able to block off and let the assigners know that I'm not available before five o'clock on Mondays Wednesdays and Fridays so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna to go to the beginning of my lacrosse season for sake of argument I'll use April 1st today and I'm gonna to go to the end of the season which I'll say is March 31st, which I know that's not true this year. But what I want to do is for Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And if you use this date range, you have to check something down here. You can check them all or just one, but you have to check something down here. Now, I don't want full day blocks because I want to be available um, after 5 o'clock. So I'm going to click partial day, and I want my block. You might as well start it at a.m. because you're not going to be available um, after midnight. And then you want to come down here and you want to get to 5 p.m. You need a reason. In this case, I'm working, so I'm not available. And you definitely want to block for all the associations and you want to click update. Again, we're thinking for a second here. So now, if I go into April, we can see on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays for April and in May, if I mouse over, I've got partial day blocks which show from um, 12 a.m. until 5 p.m. Again, if you wanted to unblock those, you could do it day by day. If you were available on that day, you could click and do the unblock procedure we did before. So hopefully this gives you a better understanding of how it is to go in to view your availability to check your availability, make sure that blocks were removed after games were canceled, how to create blocks, and how to remove blocks. There are other videos on our YouTube channel. I suggest you check those out that have to do with scheduling and other topics to help you understand how to set ZebraWeb up correctly. Thank you. Have a great day.